Namaste and greetings in the name of our mysterious Lord to everyone. Yes, the Viosa uh, voice operated support assistant, uh, which is a reusable and reconfigurable voice operated support assistant chatbot platform. Uh, the authors, uh, Joseph Wilrich Lutalo and uh, Tony J. Oyana, Department of Networks, uh, Makere University. So I'll be the one presenting. And uh, yes, uh, before we dive into the paper, uh, you see the title is already there. We have this page showing the schematic of uh, the system of the VOSA uh, summarized in one diagram from the user to the chatbot and the whole network processing and that. On the right side, you see Joseph Woolrich uh, himself. And then we have the paper snapshot of the first page of the paper we are going to discuss. So welcome. And yeah. So Joseph Woolrich Lutalo uh, is a student from Macquarie University, did his Bachelor of Science in 2011. Uh, currently final, uh, doing masters and uh, since 2011 uh, founder also lead researcher 2014 uh, at New Trezy mobile and web ICT service provider in Uganda. Well, the other author professor Tony J Oyana is a PhD holder from University of Buffalo New York uh, 2003 currently the principal at Macquarie University's College of Computing Information Sciences. Yeah, so let's go to the abstract. Uh, I imagine each one of us attending or participating will get a chance to look at the actual paper, but here we have a snapshot of the abstract. And we see that in the current research uh, that's been going on in the industry, shows that offering customer support in any form is a guaranteed means to boost and sustain business growth. So most of these modern uh, support services are embracing automation to improve effectiveness, support scalability, reduce costs. However, uh, in this research, we are going to use, uh, we've used the design science research uh, method to explore alternative approaches to delivering uh, customer support, especially using virtual assistants, as we'll see. Also in this research, we've managed to develop uh, an original architecture for a voice operated support assistant chatbot, uh, which we'll see, and also a, mechan a mechanism for encoding or developing knowledge models for this kind of system using question answer knowledge bases. So there are some uh, advantages we've found with this method compared to what's out there in the, in the industry and also in academia, and we'll look at that later. So the context of this research work uh, within the rest of the field, first of all, can be looked at from this dimension. So the first one is conversational agents, CA, and we find that the VIOSA is actually a single turn context aware conversational agent. Uh, then we have human computer interaction, HCI, uh, so we find that the VIOSA is actually mobile-based, but supporting voice uh, voice input output, text and visual outputs. So we'll see about that later. Uh, question answering systems. Uh, so VIOSA is actually a question answering system that uses uh, uh, voice interactions and just takes in prompts from the user, delivers back uh, results or answers or solutions. So it's also in the category or field of chatbots. And we see that the main interface of the VIOSA is actually a chatbot application that allows hands-free interactions. It can run on Android or where any Android emulation or hypervisor can run. Uh, we have knowledge bases. Uh, knowledge bases, the VIOSA, uh, the ecosystem utilizes uh, especially manually prepared knowledge models in the form of question answer knowledge bases. This can be readily tweaked. They can be serialized and they can be manually extended. Uh, so unlike most other implementations, I know large language models, there is no neural networks, no RDF knowledge graphs, no cognitive networks. It's as simple as that. Then we have DVA, uh, digital voice assistants. So uh, alongside some other industry leaders, you'll find that VIOSA 
is uh, also implementing uh, voice interactions. And yet, unlike most, uh, the chatbot itself is a platform upon which distinct arbitrary voice assistants can be built. So those who are researching in the area of chatbots or need to implement uh, specific or custom uh, solutions could actually just leverage it as a platform. So we are looking at the background on this screen, and we see that the key concepts that are introduced or which motivated uh, this work include information deficiency problems. So information deficiency problems uh, are to do with scenarios uh, could be in real life uh, where someone finds themselves maybe operating something or dealing with a particular service or particular topic or entity, but then they lack some context or some extra information related to it. So instead of guessing, they can utilize some mechanism to find uh, the information they need. So we find that these IDPs are kind of inevitable, uh, except even where you have all the things in place, like you have user manuals, you have uh, reference websites, you have information Q&A websites and things like that. So we are saying that without special approaches to accessing and presenting such product, service, or topic support information, we argue that these IDPs are inevitable. So we need to solve them or find ways to solve them. Then also we have interest in a platform or uh, we are talking about a platform and not uh, just a particular you know, product or particular solution because we want reusability, we want reconfigurability, we want extensibility, we want augmentation, but also want it to be something we can build provable uh, payloads or operations on. So I think that in this research, we are especially concerned with where there's a reusable technology platform that can be leveraged to implement authoritative, autonomous, customer and product support services especially the ones leveraging voice interactions in the form of a chatbot. So we want the platform to be reusable because we don't wish to address the autonomous support service delivery problem for a specific or limited domain, but rather to give a general or reusable solution. So uh, the other thing uh, that motivated this research is uh, wanting or the need for humane bots. So these are bots or virtual technologies of virtual assistants that are you know, ergonomic to interact with or to use. They're affordable, uh, but also allow for natural interactions, like people feel comfortable with them, especially as we shall see, for example, when they're working in the context of uh, companionship or psychological support or things of that kind. But even just product or service support, you want it to be kind of very human friendly. So, yeah, this is one of the reasons why we are focusing on natural interfaces, such as voice-based interactions. And we are looking at this via especially smartphone-based chat applications. But of course, as we will look at, at the uh, discussions later, this could also be with um, embedded or uh, embodied robots, you know. So concerning the background uh, problems or questions that uh, motivated or uh, defining this research work. So we find that a human with a mobile computer capable of voice interactions, such as I'm just talking to you through a computer computing device. So if they meet uh, an information deficiency problem related to a product or service, like maybe I've gone to uh, the supermarket and bought a new kind of blender. So I'm trying to operate it to make some drink at home. And then I find that I can't operate it properly. I could go to the manual, but uh, in this way, in this research, in this project, we are looking at a quicker way, like there could just be a backward on the blender. So I just scan it with this app. And then I just ask questions about what I don't understand. And then I would get my solutions instantly. So this is a scan to know information access model that we're talking about. Then also we want question answering interactions. Uh, they could be turn by turn conversations, perhaps like, you know, there is some context. So for example, we're seeing here an IDP, like what is on the menu today? Uh, I'm walking by some restaurant and I just want to know what's available. I don't want to go in and talk with someone, maybe I could just scan code and then ask some questions and get answers inside whether to walk in or move on. So the background is done and we are now uh, looking at the literature related to this research. 
So among important topics that are, uh, that are you know, relating to this work is support service access methods. So these support services, like I've said, for example, let's say you have gone to a fancy restaurant and uh, they want you to get autonomous or you know, self-help assist, assist, ass assistance, maybe. So you could just use an app, you, there could be an, an interface, you know, somewhere maybe on a door or a screen on the wall or something like that. So there is, generally we have web, mobile, desktop, and then smart devices. Then interaction modes, uh, we are looking at whether this interaction with this system is through text, like if you're just typing with a chatbot uh, and then getting maybe on, on, on a terminal. However, it could be vocal or oral, like you're just talking to this uh, robot and it's talking back to you. And then you could, could also be visual, like you're seeing each other or it's, it, it has a camera or it, it generates images on the fly based on your interaction or something like that. Then knowledge modeling methods. So we are looking at um, in the field, most of the work around this area is touching on large language models. Uh, some people are exploring with their traditional neural networks, then uh, knowledge graphs. And then some work is actually exploring using question answer corporal graphs. So in this project, you'll find that we are especially interested in that area. Then conversation modes, find that some of these chatbot systems, uh, interaction systems are supporting multi-turn conversations. Like you start a conversation, and then maybe 10, 10, uh, 10 sessions later, uh, you ask something related to the first session and then the bot or this uh, system actually is intelligent enough as some context of memory, but also other uh, things we will see in context awareness, then also nonverbal communications, like you know having a, ro a robot that just doesn't give you uh, feedback in terms of text or, or visual, but also maybe emotional you know, or uh, sentimental output. So you'll find that the Viosa, the system we are talking about here, for example, gives you some image that might be custom depending on what it's uh, replying to. Uh, then application areas, uh, some of these systems are being used to support general products, uh, services you know, in general. Then we have uh, IDP solvers, uh, general information deficiency problem solvers. Of course, here we are using the term to generalize. Then companionship robots. So, um, those looking at the paper, you'll find that there is a table trying to summarize or summarizing um, the state of the art across the field right now. So in the first column, we have uh, the various uh, leading or popular uh, chatbot uh, technologies. And then we have uh, five other columns next to that, which are helping us to contrast their performance, their characteristics, and how they differ from you know, the one, the project we're talking about in this paper. So we find that we're looking at accessibility, we're looking at supported interactions, uh, then conversation modes. We're also looking at knowledge modeling, you know, which approaches, which technologies are being used behind the scenes. Then target scenarios, uh, in which context, in which kind of cases are these chatbot or assistant technologies being uh, employed or applied. Then lastly, we have a comb for some interaction links because a lot of this work is kind of cutting edge. So some people may not know how to verify or follow up or evaluate some of these technologies. So these links are to help you to jump to those sections on the internet and then be able to see and get a feel of what is actually happening. So first of all, the replica, we find that, for example, for accessibility, it has, supports the widest range uh, uh, followed uh, by most of the others are just supporting either web, like Kiku is only on web, Cortana, desktop, Siri, mostly mobile, Google Assistant, mobile, of course, with web aspects. Then Vostak is specifically on mobile at the moment, but of course, with emulation, it could be taken to other platforms. Then we have supported interactions. So we're looking at whether we're supporting vocal, texture, or visual. So that also we see that uh, of, of most of the other technologies in this context, almost uh, most of them have similar 
properties like replica, Kiku, Cortana support all three. Uh, then Siri only textual and vocal. And then now you see that Vosak is actually textual vocal because later we'll see. Then conversation modes, multi-turn, single turn. The knowledge modeling, we have people who are employing technologies such as GPT, uh, large language models, I read behind replica. We have knowledge bases, uh, I talked about in the general sense for Kiku. Uh, then we have neural networks, um, Cortana, then as you will see the rest of the table. So that's it. And then um, the platform we are looking at, which uh, essentially is our IDP solver and is going to help us in automating customer or product support. So we see that first of all, it is made of two major components, information management, and then the second component, information retrieval and access. So information management has two key aspects. First of all, the technology or uh, the systematics behind the knowledge modeling. So we find that uh, in VOSA, we're using VOSA compatible QAKBs. So QAKBs are defined in this paper uh, in the way they are used in this technology. So we find that question answer knowledge basis. So set it's a kind of structure, structure that has questions and then alternative questions and then answers, uh, sometimes alternative answers for some sets. So that is our kind of schema. And then uh, we have operations that are done to manage the information that are go that's going to be fed into these chatbots. So that happens on, on the QAKB hosting service. So we have a QAKB browser, editor, importer, and then an exporter. Uh, later we'll see also the API aspect comes into that. Then so information retrieval and access, how these chatbots, because these chatbots don't sit on the server, they are like clients or they are standalone. Actually, in as you see in the paper, when we are concluding, we find that we can actually use the Vosak uh, chatbot independent of a server uh, using some you know clever ways to bring in the knowledge models. So we find that we have a QAKB API, uh, which allows uh, the chatbot to be able to pick knowledge models from a remote host, like maybe a server, or maybe on JIT or something like that, or in the cloud somewhere or on a local server on the LAN. So we can use that uh, sometimes through QR codes, which are called QAKB QR codes. Then we have um, a marketplace where users of this chatbot can go and browse a list of knowledge models which other participants in the community or in the ecosystem have published. So this feature is going to allow uh, the augmentation of these robots to be easy because someone can specialize on just building knowledge models, then they publish them on the marketplace and people, businesses or you know entities just download the ones they need and then the robots are able to perform relative to that knowledge model. So then we have a, a QAKB compliant client and this is uh, the app that you actually use that's called the VOSAC or the VOSA chatbot. So client has the QAKB browser, Arizona, then the interaction interface, which uses voice. So the method we used in developing this uh, project was design science research. And we find that we started with a problem and then uh, we have a solution uh, specified, then design it, implement. Uh, of course, the key aspect is to get some artifacts that solve the problem and then build on that after evaluation. So we find the key problem here was solving information deficiency problems. Then the solution was to implement an IDP solver. So among the artifacts we realized, uh, we have an IDP solver architecture based on uh, this voice operated support assistant architecture. And then we have an IDP solver proof of concept, which is the VOSA reference implementation, which you can see, we will see later, we can actually go out uh, and download or try out. So the architecture itself is made of uh, three major components, actually two major components. Um, so we have the backend, which is the QAKB hosting service. It has the database, it has the, the browser, that's that part there. And then we have, of course, the API. So the API can be somewhere here in the network. It could be on a local network. It could be on the internet or something like that. Then the client, which is this part here, is uh, made of various components. We have the 
component here, for example, that is in the client uh, interface, the QR code scanner interface, which can read uh, information through the API. Uh, and then we have a QKB resolver, picking up models and everything. So these components come together to make the client be able to do what it does as we'll see. So when using the uh, VOSAC, uh, the key entry point for, for most users is that they're going to come across a QAKB, which is telling them that you scan this QR code to access our customer support services or to access our, the product support services, or you know, maybe a tourist you've entered uh, a jurisdiction you, you're not familiar with, but they've put a signpost next to the road and the QR code and the same. If you want to ask questions about this area, just scan this QR code. So it's going to be something like this. So you scan that and then inside that QR code, you basically just find something structured like what you're seeing here. So in real life, uh, the whole sack is actually out there. Now you can download it. Uh, the link is given there. Then also you can check out a demonstration of this, uh, try it out. Here's some, some screenshots here showing us someone trying to ask a question in relation to services at Menuza Bytes uh, popular shop here in, uh, in Entebbe, Entebbe Garuga. And you see that it gives back so some show information, but also of course it talks, of course we couldn't capture the talking here, we'll see it in a demo. So talking of a demo, I'll just show something here. All right. So that's, that's it. Uh, so the impact and implications, uh, first of all, we see that uh, this chatbot is actually already on the, in, the public, in the public domain, like it can be accessed via the Google Play Store. Two is that um, it presents a platform or framework which uh, businesses could reuse, entities could reuse for healthcare, education, psychological support, and other things. Uh, so we find that it, there is already an AI knowledge model marketplace that's been set up. And when you're in the app, you'll be able to check out which knowledge models people have published and how you can maybe explore further. Then you see that uh, this VOSAC chatbot engine, uh, much as we are deploying it through a mobile or a smartphone, uh, in principle, it is possible to load it onto any uh, robot uh, chassis that supports or can run an Android payload, and then would basically be able to use the voice interaction to make or augment such robots simply. So yeah, future directions, we are seeing that um, we need or we shall want to allow for client side uh, importation of question answer knowledge bases into the VOSAC. This is to allow it to be more versatile uh, where in scenarios where either the knowledge model you need to work with is not published on the public repositories or you have developed a custom or something like that. Then also uh, alternative IDP solvers uh, may need to be hooked in or may want to explore that. So hooking into um, that may be useful. Then also to make the natural language processing engine language agnostic because right now we are assuming that all the knowledge models and the user interactions are going to be mostly in English. Uh, but as you may have seen in the demo, uh, we've managed to even make the robot somehow using that kind of implementation still be able to kind of mimic native languages. So we want to improve on that. Then you'll see that we want to support context awareness, uh, better context awareness, and then multi-time conversations. So that's essentially it. Um, and uh, the essential links you know, for those who are interested in furthering this research and collaboration, those who are interested in trying it out or even just installing WhatsApp, you know, and starting to actually use it because it's really solving a practical problem, can reach out. Also, anyone interested in um, exploring more about from Joseph, me, uh, my research is on the internet. So you can go to trazy.tech or use Telegram and go to www.write. 
Uh, also, you can visit nutrazy.com where many of uh, the research related to, the research lab I'm affiliated to has been published. So install Vosak and uh, yes, uh, explore and reach out. So if anyone has any inquiries, please shoot them out. Otherwise, thank you for listening and be blessed.